Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Mr. Anonymous, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, I recently got into your videos and they have definitely opened up my eyes. One thing that I've noticed, and it would be sweet for you to do a video about, is that many girls openly talk about how psychotic they are, like it's something they're proud of. I see many posts on Twitter and Facebook, and they get loads of likes from both men and women. It's almost like they're bragging about it like it's something they like about themselves, and makes them quote-unquote quirky. And I'm not sure what possesses them to do this, but it really pisses me off. It seems to me that girls have no worries about coming across as crazy stalkers, and will be easily forgiven for it by most people, like it's funny. Problem is, this makes them think that they can be psychotic with no repercussions. My best friend was screwed over by a manipulative girl who said that she was on the pill when she wasn't. And afterwards, everyone from our group sided with her. Just wondering what you think encourages them to do so. And I suspect there are deeper societal reasons, and it's rooted in their belief in their golden vaginas. Anyway, I just thought it would be an interesting topic for you, and would love to see what you think on the subject. Thanks, and keep up the good work. Well, Mr. Anonymous, thanks for your donation. And as you mentioned, quirky appears to be the code word for crazy. And you might be thinking to yourself, finally, we as men have a victory. At least they admit what we've known all along, that they're crazy. And don't take my word for it, I'm actually putting a link in the description to a video called The Hot Crazy Matrix, A Man's Guide to Women. And that should give you guys a good clarification about female nature. Anyways, what I find really interesting is how any one particular woman deals with her crazy. And that's really what distinguishes one woman from the next. If she recognizes her crazy and tries to put a lid on it, then that's a good thing. But instead, women calling themselves quirky is just an excuse to allow women to remove their inner straitjackets and escape the asylum, so to speak, and thus take no accountability for their actions. If she mistreats a man, then she's not a crazy bitch. She's just quirky. And you know what? Men can also be quirky, and it's typically called being eccentric. But it seems to be only socially acceptable for a man to be called eccentric if he's wealthy. Otherwise, he's just seen as plain crazy. Bill Gates, Larry Page, and many of the other moguls in Silicon Valley were considered crazy before they became successful by the society at large. They had really big ideas, but they just hadn't struck it big yet. And I remember back in the early 2000s when I started building my internet business, and people thought I was an absolute loon. And I was not eccentric. I was just plain crazy. But when I started attracting an audience of over 2 to 3 million viewers a month, and traveling the world and having all the passive income and free time that I wanted, then all of a sudden I became eccentric. I was no longer the crazy guy with the weird idea. But the moment my business began declining into oblivion, I became like the penguin in Batman Returns, with everyone abandoning me. It was like I was forced to run and hide in the metaphorical sewers to protect myself from the criticism that I was receiving. A woman will never actually have to face that from her family and friends if she ever fails. When a woman fails at a somewhat unique idea, no one will generally criticize her or laugh at her, or even shame her. She gets a free pass behind the words quirky and ironic. But if a man fails, he's a pathetic loser. And somehow as a society, we don't hurt a woman's feelings and call her a failure. We go easy on most women, but the question we should be asking as a society is, why do we twist crazy into quirky when it comes to female nature and behavior? Women can be psycho-stalkers and it's perfectly acceptable. But if a man does it, look out. And I'm sure that almost every guy out there had at least one or two crazy women following us through high school wanting to go out with us, and we were running in the opposite direction. And you'd notice that your friends would often laugh at you whenever she showed up into the room. And the other women, usually her friends, did nothing to stop her from getting all crazy and pursuing you. But as a guy back then, I remember getting crazy about a girl and wanting to be with her. And my friends were laughing at me, and her friends were telling me to back off and stop talking to her. And all I did was ask her to the dance and try to talk to her two or three times. And out came her gynocentric friend squad, and the shaming started from other guys. And I remember one time I was at a theme park and this crazy girl kept following me around, thinking that she was being cute and pinching my butt. But if I had done the same thing, there would have been a 300-pound security guard throwing me out of the park into a pile of trash cans. And I guess that's the privilege of patriarchy. I think someone should basically make a video showing women being treated equally. Can you just imagine that? A bouncer throwing out a woman for getting drunk at a club, or for sexually harassing men. Maybe call it something like, if women are treated like men. People generally tolerate the quirky or crazy behavior of women because they're cute and they give men a boner. And if that wasn't the case, they would be treated far differently. They know it, we know it, and it's basically an unspoken truth. And as men, we can't generally go around flaunting our craziness. Women, on the other hand, have no problems flaunting their insanity. I also have female clients that outright call themselves crazy. They're fully aware of their nature, and they do nothing about it. And the more they acknowledge it, the worse their behavior becomes. 
because now they have an excuse for it. If you're a dick and you call yourself a dick in front of other people before screwing them over, then in your mind you basically gave them fair warning ahead of time. And that's the way I see women that call themselves quirky and crazy. They're telling you that they'll basically behave badly just because that's who they are. And you have no choice but to accept it or leave it. And ironically, most women think that men will never leave, so they throw accountability right out the window. That's another reason why they don't like MGTOW, because if a guy goes his own way and has his own space, then there's no quirky woman to basically police it and invade his privacy. Privacy, according to women, is where the patriarchy exists and plots against them. And they want to shine a light on every dark place that men prevent them from entering. And it's like their vaginas are all powerful flashlights illuminating the deepest, darkest places on the world. We could also assume that their vaginas have the Eye of Sauron built right into them. And I also think that the American $1 bill shouldn't have a pyramid with an all-seeing eye on it. Instead, it should have a vagina with an all-seeing eye inside of it instead. That's probably what's going to happen if Hillary Clinton gets elected. She'll put an all-seeing vagina on the $1 bill. How's that for quirky? Another thing that you mentioned, Mr. Anonymous, is that women often use the excuse for crazy, which is their biological clock. Once a woman's biological clock starts ticking, you have to watch out for her using every single crazy excuse in the books to get pregnant. Remember, don't think that they want to get pregnant. Instead, they feel. And if they feel like getting pregnant, they don't care how it happens so long as it does. They become like howling cats in heat in an alleyway without the howling. And I think there's some kind of emotional turmoil deep down inside that basically wants them to desire having a baby. But it's not rational. And Mr. Anonymous, you're absolutely right when you say that they want to be psychotic without any repercussions. It's all about a complete lack of agency and responsibility for those actions. They're like leaves blowing around in the wind. It's not their fault where they land. And I knew a woman that was a flight attendant and delayed an entire flight, and she still argued that it wasn't her fault. She went crazy and got into a verbally abusive argument with another flight attendant, and she couldn't take responsibility for it. We often speak about women behaving and acting like overgrown kids. And most children, by their nature, are troublemakers and poorly behaved. And they're constantly trying to get more cookies out of the jar the moment you aren't looking. I was also incredibly well-behaved as a kid. One night when I was three years old, I was watching Star Wars for the first time in my life, and I saw Darth Vader and the Stormtroopers on the Death Star, and I was completely amazed. And then my parents said, it's time for bed. And the last thing I saw was Luke, Han, and Leia in the garbage disposal. And I didn't see the movie again for another two years. I did what I was told as a child, and rarely complained, and was sane and rational as a kid. Yet now as an adult I have to deal with insane 30 and 40 year old women that probably caused all kinds of trouble for their parents while they were growing up. No thanks. I'd rather lock myself in front of my computer screen forever instead of dealing with crazy. Sorry, I mean quirky women. I realize that they're all pretty much crazy, and I guess the only way to make a woman accountable is when her family and friends are around. That's when a woman has to be on her best behavior to project status onto everyone else around her. And if she doesn't behave herself in such situations, then there's also the possibility that she's acting like that on purpose to be a chameleon to attract a man to her that's eccentric and has a lot of money. A guy that's got a lot of crazy ideas and a few loose screws and does things that aren't socially acceptable and yet is successful in the world would be a great catch for a woman like that. And I've heard people like Spetsnaz and a few other MGTOWs, including Paul Proteus, say they liked crazy chicks with tattoos. Maybe, just maybe, these women are acting all crazy and out of control to attract men like us to them. And I know that I almost fell for the same type of woman a while back. But I didn't take my chances with her because I didn't want to deal with the consequences of what would happen. Because the overwhelming majority of women can't be eccentric. They can only be varying degrees of crazy or quirky. And the only woman I would call eccentric would possibly be Ayn Rand, because she had some crazy ideas and became rather successful and built a cult following around them. Other than that, I can't really think of any others. But it just dawned on me that women intentionally try to appear eccentric and crazy to attract men that are creative and free-thinking types to them. Maybe they want a hipster type with rich parents and a large trust fund. Michael J. Fox from Back to the Future fame has said that his 26-year-old son is a hipster in Brooklyn, and so I would see women getting all tattooed up and flaunting their craziness to possibly attract a man like that. And with a daddy like that, she's probably thinking that it's absolutely worth it. Guys that are eccentric have money, otherwise they would basically be seen as crazy. So crazy women might be trying to be chameleons to attract them. It's probably as simple as that, and there's nothing more to it. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks again, Mr. Anonymous, for your donation. And as for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the divorce lawyers away. So enjoy the rest of your day. 
and cheers.